Hail to you all, whether you like fact or fiction, I am Jonathan, also known as the PC Genie. Today, as a partial answer to one of my viewers' questions in the 300 question video about armies in the fictional series Game of Thrones, I will be talking about how I view the Unsullied. To those of you who don't know, the Unsullied are a type of troop whom get their silly name from being eunuchs and avoiding the temptations of the world, except killing of course, which is pretty messy. Now right off the bat, I will say that these ungrubbied are very comparable to the ancient Spartans of real life for many reasons. Firstly, let us look at the training and lifestyle of these shiny men. They are trained in the arts of fighting from childhood, and are known for being very tough and obedient to their commanders, demonstrating bravery and capability in battle. Additionally, their training, comparable to the Spartan Agogi, is so tough they end up being very resilient to pain, and some even die in the training process. The Dirtless fight with spear and shield in phalanx, similar to various Greek hoplites, including the Spartans. Spear and shield is an excellent defensive style of fighting, as cavalry charges would be eviscerated and infantry can be held at bay, so long as the formation holds together. As a backup, if the opponent gets past the spear points into a tighter range, swords can be drawn and effective close-range fighting can be used instead. This type of style was quite effective, and another example of spear and shield fighting being popular past ancient times would be the Anglo-Saxon fjords, as spears would be both cheap and easy to learn. If we look at the armour of these clean warriors, the style itself is very comparable to Guess who? Those a lot. As historically they wore a breastplate or cuirass, and sometimes greaves, along with a helmet that partially covers the face, but yet allows good enough eyesight. The armour itself is made from leather that's presumably toughened, such as boiled leather. Although toughened leather is not as sturdy as the bronze armour Spartans used, and seriously not what I'd issue to anyone that elite and expensive, it is still able to absorb and deflect certain strikes and shots, with the added bonus of being lighter for better speed on the battlefield. One issue I do have with the cuirasses, the regularly showering fighters wear, is firstly the glaringly obvious issue of the protection being limited and not covering limbs or potential vulnerable spots like the armpits, and the weird gaps in the actual main torso itself where anything could just glide in and kill the poor unsullied but very silly. If I was the master at arms issuing armour to these supposedly top rank soldiers, I would at least give them a good riveted male hauberk, which means full sleeved chainmail since it was used in hot countries, and is not only more resistant to all types of attack when combined with tough padding, but is also very flexible and manoeuvrable, so there is basically no restriction in movement. On top of this, it not only covers much more of the body in general, but also covers vulnerable spots like the armpits as well, even to the degree where extra parts like, say, an aventail attached to the helmet could overlap the torso protection and close up the gaps around the neck and the collarbone as well, for an added bonus. I have identified, going from historic battles that happened in real life, they have two main weaknesses. Projectile troops such as archers and slingers can safely shoot at them until either the armour is punctured or the missiles catch areas that just don't have armour wasting all those years of close quarter training simply because they went all cheapskate on protection. Secondly, if you can hold their infantry in place with your own and then get another troop to charge them from behind or the flanks, they're basically screwed. 
this actually happened in real life, in the Battle of Thermopylae, where the mixed Greek phalanxes cleverly made their stand against the Persians in a narrow pass between deep water on one side and tall mountains on the other. So despite being heavily outnumbered, they held the line for wave after wave of Persian close combatants and even resisted shots from Persian archers that couldn't penetrate their bronze-covered shields or bronze armour. Yet, once the Persians discovered a pass around the mountain and started leading, well, landing troops via ships behind the defenders, there was just complete slaughter and the battle was won by the attackers. In summary, the unmudded are troops you could hire, equip and train much cheaper with similar results. Their focus on close combat, or at least in all the episodes I have seen, makes them vulnerable, yet they never use the simple counter tactic of decent armour to prevent serious issues, you know, like knights in real life and in series would do. Basically, despite them being very hardcore elite troops which are usually right up my street, they just seem to be novelty troops that are really terrible value for money. Get some armoured knights and foot soldiers, and spend the rest of the budget on cavalry and archers, for goodness sake. 